On today's episode, we are going to be talking about interior design. And I'm with Ali Hearn of Ali Hearn Studios, and we are here at the Oak Wrights show home. The first thing we do is find out about them. The key element of a room like this is the colour in the fabrics. The client wants that uber luxury in the master bedroom. Yeah, yeah. So we're here at the Oakwrights show home. Ali, thank you very much for travelling up to Herefordshire to come and visit us. And we're going to be looking at the three key rooms that you need to think about on interior design within the home. And those would be, Ali? It has to be the kitchen, it comes first. Then I guess the sitting room yes. is another big element. Yeah. And then it has to be the master. Master bedroom en suite, absolutely. Yeah. So shall we go on in and start the journey? I'd love to, I'd Let's love to. Let's go and do to. it. So here we are, shall we start in the first room, the kitchen? Most important room in the house. Absolutely. So here we are then in the kitchen and uh, Ali, what would be the first point to think about regarding interior design in the home? Well, I think Tim, the thing that we've found from experience now is that you can never get the interior design team in early enough in the process because there's so many elements to think about in order to get to that end finish which the client ultimately wants. But from a self builders point of view, you're focused on buying the plot, then you focus on gaining the design, getting through planning, which is such a relief when you've gained your planning, then suddenly you've got all the decisions to make regarding construction, and you're thinking about foundations, oak frame, panel windows, all those big construction elements, when actually one of the things you should be thinking about early on to get the best result, end result, is the interior design which comes right at the end of the project. Yes. So what have we got here then? Well, I mean, I think what's really important to glean on any project is that every project is personal and different. Yes. So there's not one fits all. So when clients come to us, the first thing we do is find out about them, about how they live, about what they love, about what they don't like and I think that's how the mood board comes together it's culmination of elements that come together to ultimately suit how they are going to live in the home so what we try to do with all of our designs is give a neutral palette that's actually quite future proof because if you have a neutral base you can add to it and layer it later yes. but essentially the big ticket items that the clients will pay for like the the paint colors and the the essential fixed pieces if they're fairly neutral you can add color you can add layer you can add design around it your thoughts in this room what do you think obviously what sings to me in this room is if you stripped everything away the structure is classic timeless yeah for the plot you've got this frame is perfect and there's so many things that you could do with it whether you add a partition there you could in this day and age now crittle is around in, in our lives there we go yes you could indeed. put some internal partitions which wouldn't necessarily mean it then does not still maintain its open plan oh well that lighting that's not that, that, <laughs> that lighting is 15 years ago well, um, yes yeah. and and listen this track lighting yeah. i had this in my victorian villa you know in my 20s and i was over the moon with it yes but actually now you know we always bring a lighting designer in for our projects with this beautiful ideas box that we have here i noticed that we have a little box here and this is this fascinated me because this is full of all different types of metal yeah so tell me about that so again so back to us saying that we have a neutral palette so let's just say for example you have this this neutral palette and then we're adding layers so the layers could be we can add brass onto this neutral palette yeah. but if you added chrome onto this palette it gives a whole different feel you so know. you've used chrome here we've used chrome but did i think about it at the time probably not at all that was just chrome there was but everywhere. Yeah. so we've got the sort of chrome well, was everywhere i would have used chrome eight years ago as well yeah but now i would probably as I, we do in a lot of our projects i would probably use brass okay brass yeah. is beautiful against the it oak does, yes as you can and see i see you've got another sort of a is it a yeah, this is what we call bronze. Bronze, yes. And so, I mean, that's my fave now. Bro bronze I, or brass. I just would like be my the movement, all the, so we've got the darker colour with the bronzy behind. I can imagine on the taps that would give a, a really, a very much different look, wouldn't it? It's I agree. Fantastic. And it's amazing against the oak and it's beautiful against the porcelain. And I think what that's important because um, you want to set your precedence throughout the building 
to keep with a theme so that the room, one room flows into the, the next. Thread, you've got a thread linking everything together. Exactly. Okay, shall we move on to the next room? Let's do it. Sitting room, here we come. An oak frame, open plan. The bay system works really well where what, what it does, it sort of defines space as opposed to dividing areas. Yeah. And I, I think probably from interior design that gives it lots of opportunities and probably adds some little challenges, I'd imagine, in some ways. The oak frame structure and the very basis of how you design these buildings leaves it so versatile for the client and the designer, of course. Personally, it just goes back to how they live their lives. For example, with my parents' generation, if my parents are living on their own. They've got no need to soundproof anything. They want to be near each other or, or not, as the case yeah. may be. <laughs> Whereas actually, if we had young children in a space like this, I think it would be good to have the versatility to close off the noise while the mums are chatting in the kitchen and the kids are watching CBeebies. You Absolutely. Know. What are your thoughts and ideas? What could we possibly do here, Ali? That I like to create a really quiet quite calm, neutral palette, and then add dimensions to it and add the layers. The one thing that I would definitely do in here, because you have a hard surface on the floor, is I would add a rug. Yes. Not only to zone the area, but to just give more cosiness. And, and it softens, I think, also aesthetics. for the sound, I suppose. You get too many hard surfaces, don't you? So the sound vibrates a little bit. And... 100%. Yeah. And of course, a massive key element of a room like this is the, the colour in the fabric. We've gone neutral here, but you could, I suppose, add a yeah. splash of colour if you wanted to, couldn't you? Absolutely. And I see you've got some samples here. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is again what we do when we're in the studio designing for the clients is that we'll start with a neutral palette and then yeah. I, I think some clients may say, look, I, I really want colour. Others will say, I prefer neutral. And if somebody does want colour, then you look at the palette and you go, OK, so this is calm, but actually we can I add... I like how in the mood boards you've got the plants here, so giving that natural feel adding in is very good. Well, I mean, I'm obsessive about greenery in... Yes the inside spaces as well as out because it makes all the difference. You bring the interior designer in early so you decide upon your style that you're going to be going for, what the look is and what you, your Pinterest wish board or whatever. Yeah. Then you've got the budget and that can be large or small as long as you know early on then yeah. you can work to, work to that budget. And it's a little bit like designing the house. Always we try and say, what is the budget for the build? Mm. Because if we know what the budget is earlier, we can maximise the effect of the budget. Yes. So you have to be careful as a customer, you don't say too little, because we, we then design the house. And people say, well, we'll add on, add on. You need to be aware of the budget. Well, don't worry, we'll, we'll push. We say, well, and sometimes you say, well, actually, once we know what the real budget is, we're almost better to step back, start afresh. Whereas I imagine with interior design, if you know what the real budget will be for the interior design, whether it's large or small, you can maximise the effect to the, to the budget. So yes, clients can use our services really to do absolutely everything from the beginning with the architect to turnkey and installation. Or the more economical option, of course, is just for us to receive the drawings from the architect or from the client and we put together some concepts for them to give them an idea of what they can achieve and then the client goes and completes that themselves. So we've done now the, the kitchen, we've done the sitting room and I think should we move on now to the master bedroom? The next important thing? Absolutely. Absolutely, let's do it. We've got the lovely Sling brace roof trusses to have a look at, so let's go on and have a little look and see what we can conjure up here. And let's have a look at your mood board and see you know, what we can think about regarding the master bedroom. What, mm -hmm. what are people finding is important on interior design in master bedrooms? Well, I mean, you know, obviously the client wants that uber luxury in the master bedroom. Yeah. It's your showpiece room, isn't it? Yes. Not necessarily to show people, but to just feel as the owners of the home that it's the most luxurious, I think. Okay. People tend to actually be happy to have a little bit more spend in their own bedroom. Yes. The massive advantage, obviously, of having an oak framed master is the potential to have this incredible vaulted ceiling. Yeah. Which is so beautifully high and I'm very into my lighting. I love working with the lighting designer and, you know, no better structure really than an oak frame to be able to use architectural lighting. We tend to spec the decorative lights. 
So for example, in this room, because this beautiful big bolt, I would love to make a big feature light above the bed. Yes. Personally, for example, this one, I find too high. Almost high enough, but yes. So I would bring it lower to make it much more of a feature, sit in front of the A-frame so that you can see it from the outside and enjoy it in. We've had a great time. I've really enjoyed you know, learning all about interior design. So really, just remind me once again, your top tips. So I think my three top tips would always be can never get the designer in early enough. No. Focus very early on on budget. Yes. And then the third thing really is have your end goal in mind and work towards that. Well, this yeah. has been great fun. Thank you really very much. Really fun. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you for inviting me. I think there's many more topics on interior design we can look into oh, in the future. Oh, well, careful what you wish for to Tim, because I could talk all day about it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed today's uh, episode on interior design. Ali Hearn of Ali Hearn Studios. Thank you, Ali. Thank you. And press like and also subscribe and also leave a comment for us. We'd like to know what you think.